God gets in it. Amen. 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 Come on, preacher. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you what's the truth. I believe God said, believe in this way. That's right. Here today. Oh, I thank you for God's. I thank God for His amazing yeah. grace. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful God He is. If you will turn uh, to Psalms chapter 18. Psalms chapter 18. And while you turn, we're going to uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this time that we've had today. Oh, for the glorious movement of the Holy Spirit today. I thank you, God, for every song that's been sung, for every prayer that's been prayed. Now, Lord, as we go into the uh, time that we had stand, I break the bread of life. I, Father, I ask that you touch your soul. I, I, one more time. I, oh, God, I know my place. I, and I know, Lord, I, I, that without you, I, I'd just be beating the wind. I, but I ask for the anointing I, I, one more time. I, I ask for the Holy Ghost of God to fill me. I, empty me out, Lord, I, and fill me. I, I, Lord, with that, you'd have our folk to hear. I, and I praise you. I, and I'll give you the glory. I, Lord, if there's one here lost and undone without you. I beg for convicting power yes, this Oh God, I ask that you just move from breast to breast. Search our hearts today, God. Oh Father, if there's one that's cold and indifferent, one that's walking contrary to your will, oh God, today would you please move on that heart and I'll praise you yeah, and I'll Lord. give you the glory for it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Let me get through this coat right now. I am Psalms chapter 18 beginning with verse 1. If correctly reading reads like this, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower, I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death come past me, and the flood of the ungodly men have made me afraid. The stars of hell come past me about. The snares of the devil prevented me. In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears. I want to ask you a question today and my thought is this if we love him if we love him I want to tell you this today my friend if you love him like you should love him brother there ain't enough devils in hell to keep you out of the house of God Amen. let me tell you something brother God David I believe with all my heart Amen. David loved the Lord the Bible said that he was a man after God's own heart. But if we love him, there's some things, there's some benefits that we'll get from serving him. Now I want you to notice this. David said, he's my strength. The first thing that I find in this that we get from God if we love him is we'll find strength. Now let me tell you something. Now listen, that strength is a firm in movable rock. He said he is my rock and my fortress. Oh listen to this. Not only will he do it in due time but he'll do it in the meantime. Folks say let's wait on God. Let me tell you something. You ain't got to wait. Listen. If we serve him he won't just in due time help us but he'll help us in the meantime. He'll lift us up He'll be yeah. our rock, yeah. and he'll be our strength. When all of hell comes against us, 
uh, when the world uh, comes against us. Uh, I'm here to tell you we have one uh, that's, uh, uh, that's stronger, uh, uh, that's more mighty than any power yeah. we've ever known. Uh, and I'm here to tell you uh, he will be our strength uh, in a time of trouble. Yes, amen. Oh, listen. I, you know, <laughs> you know, I, God don't just help me sometimes. He tells, He helps me all the time. <laughs> Every morning when I get up, and the first thing I do is I walk out on that little old porch. Me and Susie down there at the river. And I, we may be cramped up, but there's a deck out there I can go to when I get cramped. And I'll go out there on that deck. And I'll get down there. Uh, this morning, I went in there. Uh, she woke me up and said, Get up, baby. We got to get ready. Said, I got your coffee made and got it poured. Ain't she good? to me. And I went in there and I got my coffee and I went out and I sat down on that deck and the first thing I noticed uh, when I sat down on that deck uh, there was a little old bird there just a singing and I got to thinking my goodness God you set me out here just so you could tell me you love me this morning. I got to watching them trees as the wind was rippling through them and I thought my goodness God I love you and I appreciate you loving me. No appreciate what you done for me at Calvary. And I couldn't have done it for myself. Knowing that thing, you know, I've nearly in shop ground. I've been in shop ground all morning. I've been just like a big bull boy. I want to get to the house of God. I'm here to tell you, he's my strength. He's my fortress. And you know what? If you'll look that up, oh, listen, I'm fixing to bless you if you'll listen. If, you, if you'll look that up, what he's talking about when he said my rock, he's talking about a God a cliff in the rock a place where he would set you a place of protection where he would protect you from all the, all the forces that come against you I don't know what you do I think about God today but I'm going to tell you this he is our protector and Satan can't get to us brother he's got us protected if we'll just stay in his will Amen. Oh, he'll hide, he'll stick us in that cliff of the rock. You know, it's a hiding place. Amen. He'll hide us yeah. back in that cliff of the rock. God you know, I, I preached not too long ago on the, on the shepherd and how the shepherd tends for the sheep. But you know, at night, the shepherd would take them little old lambs and he'd put them up in the cliff of the rock there. And, uh, and uh, that was a place where they was hid, where the bears and the, uh, the wolves and the lions and stuff couldn't get to them. Ain't you glad that our shepherd just slides us right in that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Now. He just slides us right in that cliff and he hides us from those things that would harm us. Oh, David said, Thou art my purveying. Oh, hide me under my under thy purveying, Lord. Ain't you glad that he can hide us? He'll stay back where the devil can't get to him. That's right. Come on now. Oh, listen. He's just, he's our strength. He'll come. Uh, they sing a song here uh, sometimes when we think he's four days late, he's right on time. You know, I'm telling you, he'll come and he'll be on time every time he comes. I noticed something else that he said. He said, you my buffler. I used to haul logs. Now, I know what a set of bucklers are. When I'd, I'd hop haul freight, I've drove trucks and stuff all my life. And when you get that load on that truck, you take that buckler and you secure that thing down. You get it where it ain't gonna be shifting from one side to the other. Oh, let me tell you something. Oh, thank God for the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. He'll just come on us and he'll just buckle us down. Amen. Say, preacher, what's so important in that? Well, the Bible said, be not blown around by every wind of doctrine that comes along. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the love of God. I'm telling you what he'll do. He'll buckle us down where we won't be flipping and flopping around. Amen. You, Amen. If you can't stay in the will of God, you need a buckler. You need him to come and buckle you you down. In other words, you can't stay in his will. I believe with all my heart. 
If we love Him and we trust in Him, He'll keep us safe and He'll keep us where we won't be shifting around everywhere else. But He'll be our buckler. Yeah, amen. Oh, you know, uh, I, I, uh, I used to be one of them. Every time he turned around, I in and out, in and out, in and out. But you know what? I finally figured out that if I'd just get in his will and stay in his will, right. that everything else would be all right mm. in my life. Oh, listen. He's my buckler. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice something else. And this is the part, if you're here and you're lost and undone without God, I want you to listen to what I'm fixing to tell you. He's the horn of our salvation. Sure. Right. Now that horn, I want you to go look this stuff up. I want you to do some study and make sure I'm telling you right. That horn represents defense. An animal with a horn used that horn to defend itself. You know, when I try to defend myself, the rest, I make a mess. When I try, and listen, I know that folks don't like me, and I know that folks talk about me, and, they talk, and I used to, I would get so mad. <laughs> when somebody says something about me, oh, it make me so mad. And when they didn't agree with me, I'd get mad, because I thought I was right. <laughs> Y'all don't look at me that way. Y'all do the same thing. <laughs> when you think something, you think you're right. And when somebody tries to contradict you, it makes you mad. <laughs> Gert, you get on me and I say, and boy, I get upset sometimes. Don't you contradict me. Don't. I tell you that all the time. Because you all the time contradict. <laughs> <laughs> and I get upset about it. Sure. But you know, when we try to defend ourselves, and we try to uh, argue <coughs> the point, we get in trouble. Yeah. But you know what I've learned? <laughs> Cheryl, I've learned. That when Susie's wrong, I just get down the altar and say, Lord, I know she's wrong. You know she's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then God will say, No, she ain't wrong, she ain't wrong. And you know you the one that's wrong. No, but I've learned, seriously, I've learned that when things get to aggravating me, people talk and they say things that I know is not right. And they try to uh, try to put me down, try to push me down. You know what I've learned? I've learned that if I just lay it on him, Man. and I'll say, Lord, there ain't nothing I can do about it. They're going to think yes, what know. they want to think anyway. That's right. They're going to say what they want to say anyway. And I can't stop them from doing that. But God, you know my heart. Amen. Lord, you just keep me right. And then, our oh, Lord, bless them. Amen. Father, would you just bless them? And would you just, our oh, Lord, oh, whatever they need, would you supply their needs? You, say, you mean you pray for folk talk about it? Yes, I do. Amen. I've learned that when I get to the point to where I can pray for them that persecute me, and I can pray for them that don't like me, and I can pray for them that's all the time running me down, I've learned that God will bless me for that. You see, God likes us to be like Him. He likes us to be forgiven. I'm sure He didn't enjoy the whipping that they gave Him. He didn't enjoy it when they smote Him on the face. He didn't enjoy it when they took a cat of nine tail and they began to beat him across the back with it. And he certainly didn't enjoy it when they drove those spikes in his hand and his feet. But when he was hanging there on the cross dying for your sins and mine, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Can 
we Come get on. that way Come today? How yeah. can we get to work? How we can say, Father, they just don't know what they do. Father, will you forgive them? Father, will you bless them this day? Help them God that their day. Sometimes folks get mad and grumpy and say things just because they don't feel good. But I'm going to tell you, we pray God help them feel good today. So they won't be running up out in town down. And brother God will bless you. I'm going to pray for them. Amen. Amen. But God's our defense. When we realize that he can defend better than we can, oh, then we can say we love him. Oh, that's right. Amen. It's easy. Now listen. It's easy for the words to come across the lips. I love you. Those are easy words saying. I won't never forget when Susan and I got married. Man, that day I watched her walk down that aisle. That was the prettiest girl I'd ever seen in my life. Oh my goodness, I just wanted to eat her up. <laughs> I thought, my goodness, how in the world did a no ugly country boy? Uh, old Danny, Danny uh, Wright told me I told her a big lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but when she come walking down that aisle and I seen her in that, uh, in that wedding get up, you know, and I thought, oh my goodness, what a pretty girl. Oh, and, and I loved her so much and I still today love her so much and uh, listen to me I ain't just saying that I love that girl right there buddy I'm telling you I love her with all my heart but I uh, preacher what are you getting at I'm getting at this God loves me more than I love her Amen. I'm his bride and when he looks down he don't see my old filthy sin uh, that was there uh, but he sees that precious blood of his uh, that was applied to my heart and you know what I'm the most yes, beautiful man that he's ever looked That's on. Right. Because yeah. I'm his bride. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Ain't you glad that when he sees us, he sees a beautiful bride. Yeah. Oh, now uh, listen, I'm going to tell you something else. You go to doing something to her, you can do whatever you want to to me. Uh, but you go to doing something to her, you got me to deal with. I'll tell you that. And God is the same way about uh, his bride. Uh, brother, you don't mess with his bride. He will get you for that. I'm telling you, he loves his bride. He loves you. And he loves us. He's the horn of our salvation. He's our defender. He'll take care of us. And he'll see us through the trials of this life. Amen. Is that all right? <laughs> Thumbs up. Amen. All right. <laughs> you know, we worry about, you look around and and I'm fixing to try to close this thing out. I know we've already run over, but I want to, uh, I, you know, we, we look around and we see those that just don't recognize God. <coughs> we see our nation, the leaders of our nation, that are about as corrupt and low down as I ever seen in my life. And we see all of this sin and these folks out in California teaching our kids how to dress Lord yeah. help us right. Lord help us right, amen. you know it's a sight when a bunch of green haired earring wearing folks tell our kids how to dress yeah. Yeah. Right. and we sit and let them do it yeah. oh that's the fashion let me tell you something you need to forget about the fashion you need to dress yourself appropriately amen. you need to look like a child of God as well as yeah. act like a child of God I believe that. I believe that. Amen. But anyway, Amen. let me get on to what I was getting to. We see all of these folks, and it seems like that nothing ever bothers them. Yeah. That everything that they want, it just falls right in place for them. They don't never, they don't never lose their jobs, and they don't never, uh, uh, they don't never miss a payday, and they don't never have to worry about where the next meal's coming from, and who's going to pay the light bill, and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, as Christians, we get to the point to where we question God about that. Yeah. 
He said, Lord, I live for you. And now here I am doing without. And Lord, these folk don't even try to live for you. And it looks like everything just falls in place for them. Have you ever thought about there? This is the only heaven they'll ever know. That's right. Yeah. They're in the best place that they'll ever be. Yeah. And I'm going to, you say, well, preacher, these folks that are doing that may claim to be Christians. That's the word, claim to be. Amen. The Bible says it's not everyone that saith me, Lord, Lord, that I enter in. That's right. Our church pews are full of folks today that claim to be Christians, yeah. that say they're Christians, mm -hmm. that have went through some kind of experience. I said they go through a convulsion instead of conversion. <laughs> <laughs> that, have, uh, uh, that have come to an altar, or they've come down and shook some preacher's hand and they've joined the church and uh, they went through baptism or, uh, and they feel like it because they've done that, they're all right. I'm going to tell you something. They're not all right. right. Unless you've had a heart yeah. to heart meeting with Jesus, you ain't all right. right. Unless, number one, the Holy Spirit has convicted you of your sins. Yeah. So you can't come to God just any time you want to. That's right. That's right. right. Man. He said, no man comes to me so my father draw him. Amen. You can't come anytime you want to. You see these folks on television, and they'll be coming down the altar, and they'll be blowing bubbles and chewing on chewing gum and laughing all the way down the aisle. You don't come to God that way. No, Let me tell you something. If you come to God, it'll be with a broken heart. I'm going to tell you something I will never forget. When the convicting power of God got on me, Brother, I, I, it wasn't no laughing done. I realized how low down and how sorry I was. And I realized the price that my Savior had paid so that I could be saved. And uh, that I, that the sin that I bore, I'm telling you, uh, uh, I, I was guilty. I was found guilty before God. And, and you were too if you were ever saved. Right, right. But the very moment, and I knelt down in that altar of prayer. Well, I, you know, I'm going to tell you something. God saved me before every thought. <laughs> the minute I said, I will. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. <laughs> uh, amen. Yes, amen. He was there for me. Amen. Well, I come on down the altar because I had some things I had to straighten up with God. With God. And I remember saying, Lord, I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Please, God, I need you. I don't know what all I prayed that day, but I remember telling him how much I needed him. Now, let me tell you something today, folks. You may not realize it, but you need him too. But those folks that go on day after day after day and seem like everything's going good for them, one day after a while, they're going to stand before God. And I'm going to tell you something. I hope you don't stand in that white throne judgment because there ain't going to be no saved in that judgment. Think about it. When you stand in that white throne judgment, oh my goodness, there is not going to be any defense that day. And there's not but one question going to be asked. Has the blood of Jesus been applied to your heart? Amen. Have you accepted Amen. him as your Savior? And if they say no, that's the last question. They ain't no need asking no more. Amen. If you've rejected the Son of God, you're going to die and you're going to spend eternity in a lake of fire. Let me tell you. It's going to be eternal. <coughs> Ain't gonna be just like a brush pile, you throw it out there and it was just a little while it's burning up. But as long as eternity rolls, you will burn in a lake of fire. Where the fire is not quenched, and the worm or the soul died not. Eternal agony, eternal pain. But you know what's gonna be even worse than that? 
to be eternally separated from the Creator. Mm -hmm. What was it? He said, we groan earnestly. Paul said, we groan earnestly, desiring to depart. You see, ever since we've been saved by the grace of God, there's something in us that has wanted to go home. Amen. Has wanted to be in the presence That's right. of Amen. God. Amen. And this old body groans. We travail because we want to go there. Those that forsake him, those that never accept him as their savior, they're going to hear the words, depart from me. You worker of iniquity, I never knew you. And they'll be eternally separated from God. Said that was a place of outer darkness. <clears throat> Most of you have been to either the Soda Cavern or some of these caves where you go in and they turn the lights off and it's so dark in those places. You ain't seen dark. Because you see, He is our light. Amen. Without Him, there is no light. When you're cast out into outer darkness, you're going to be in the darkest place that you've ever been. You're going to be in a place of torments. And you're going to be with a bunch of people. Now listen to me. Listen to what I'm fixing to tell you. You're going to be with murderers. You're going to be with whoremongers. You're going to be with adulterers. You're going to be with all of these folks that all your life you have despised. That's the very one you're going to be with. I'd hate to know I had to spend eternity in a place with Jim Bundy, wouldn't you? Hmm. Yeah. I'd hate to know that I had to spend eternity in a place with them folks that blew up the Twin Towers. That's the kind of folks you're going to be spending eternity with if you don't accept Jesus as your Savior. Now listen to me. I'm fixing to give you a, a, an opportunity to come to this altar. And I'm not asking you if you're a church member. I'm not asking you what you are, what affiliation you are. I'm asking you, are you sure that you're saved? Are you sure? 100% that the blood of Jesus has been applied to your heart. Well, preacher, when I was a child, I come up and I knelt in an altar. I believe, I say, believe in ain't good enough. You have got to know that you know where's God calling right now. <laughs> You've got to know that you know that you know. And if you don't, I'm begging you today, don't leave this building. You see, God could call you before the sun rises. Come on. Preacher, I'm young. Let me tell you something. We see every day where young folks go out to meet God. And I'm going to tell you something. There's no second chances. There is no uh, a lot of folks believe that they go into purgatory and the saints can pray you out. I'm going to tell you something. That's hogwash. Amen. If the tree falls to the east, it'll lie to the east. I'm telling you, the way you leave this world, that'll be the way you stand before God. Lost and undone without God, without a hope in the world. And hell will be your home if you're not saved. But preacher, I don't want to come down there. I don't want them people seeing me come down that aisle. Let me say, tell you this, too. He said, what? let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Oh, I'm asking them to bow their heads and close their eyes and don't want to look around, and I do that a lot. But you know what? 
I believe God honors it when we just get up and come boldly down here to this altar and say, Lord, I'm not where I need to be. If you're a Christian, if you've been saved by the grace of God and you're out of the will of God, you are fish ashamed of yourself. Amen. If you don't get up and go to church and take your family to church, if you don't get up and go to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, preacher, I ain't got time for all that. Jesus had time for you. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to stand before God and give an account of that. You can... Uh, you can say, oh, he's a loving, merciful God. and uh, I, I, I'm telling you, if you're saved, you're going to stand in the judgment seat of Christ and you're going to give an account of everything that's not under the blood. Amen. And I believe with all my heart. What was it he said? The Bible said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together and even the more so. As you see that day of right. there's going to be folks that are going to stand before God, and they're going they're going to have to say, "Man, their own condemnation." They're going to lose rewards because they didn't support their church. I believe that. Now, I preached you what God gave me this morning. I told you how good He is. How merciful he is. How he protects us. How he watches over us. And then I've told you the other side. I've told you that he's a jealous God. And he's a God of wrath. Now, what you do with that is up to you. Loretta, I want you and I want the Haven there to come around. Add a little good song sometime. I don't care what you sing. Just sing something. I, I want you to stand together and I don't want nobody moving. I don't want no talking. I don't want nothing. I want you to reverence this altar call this morning. You move around, you whisper, you say something. It might cause, it might give the devil just enough time to get somebody's mind off what they need to be doing. Now let me tell you this. I want you to mind God this morning. Whatever God is speaking to you, whatever he's leading you to do, I want you to do it. If you feel like God's leading you to join this church, you come up here and you and we'll open the door to the church. If you feel like you're out of the will of God and you need to come up here and rededicate your life, you need to come on. You're done been here. If you're lost and undone without God and you need a Savior, today is the day you need to come. You don't need to turn Him away no more. You need to just come on. Will you, do you love him today?
It's late. It may be later than you think. All I'm asking you to do is just find God. How about? Oh, Satan's trying to tell you. He's trying to do everything in the world to get your mind off of what God's speaking to you and telling you right now. Don't say no to him today. These folks don't want to pray with them. Yes, they do. You see, every one of us spends what you have to do. What about? What about? Preacher, how you know there's somebody else? Let me tell you something. I walk through this house and I lay my hands on everybody here that needs to be in this office. Why? Your countenance is told me. Let me tell you something. You can't walk contrary to God. Stand. God's man. God shows his man. And I'm telling you, and I can go back through this house and I just lay my hands on folks be something but just something you've said or something you've done. Maybe something you failed to do. God may have something for you to do in your life and you haven't done it. You may have made a vow to God. You know what the Bible said about that, don't you? It's better not to make a vow to God than it is to make a vow to break it. You may have promised God to do something you haven't done it. Whatever it is today, you need God. You need to make things right with your God today. Don't leave here today. Don't leave here 
Preacher, it's late. We hungry. We won't go. It may be later than you realize. Amen, brother. Please, I'm begging you one more time, and then I'm going to close. Will you come? Will you come? Don't turn God away right now while he's speaking. Heavenly Father, I've done all I know to do. I thank you, Father, for these that have been honest. But Lord, there's others that should have come. And didn't. I don't know that need in their life, and I don't know, uh, uh, God, what they stand in need of, but you know. And I ask, Father, that you would continue to be able to please, God, don't withdraw your spirit. Oh, please, God, help them, Lord, to find them an altar somewhere this day and make things right with you. Thank you, Father, for this service today. Thank you, Father, for the precious Holy Ghost of God. Oh, God, the Holy Ghost, we're so thankful that you come among us today. Oh, thank you for the power that we felt today. Now, I ask you, Father, this would you visit with us this whole day? Father, tonight when we meet back here, Oh, Father, would you meet with us? Oh, Father, would, could we just one more time feel the power and the movement of the Holy Spirit? And we'll thank you and we'll praise you. For it's in Jesus' blessed name we ask. Amen. 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 May God bless you. Is our prayer before we leave? I want uh, the name to stand. Her and Lynn have an anniversary. <laughs> so we're going to sing happy anniversary. Y'all ready? Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. We'll let you carry us out for anniversary dinner. Just let us know where we're going. Y'all come back to the house, bring one first and leave, we'll have twice in it. Don't do too much.
That one, we need to go buy us a, if they can, I don't know how much they have to, we need a CD player that's good in there and just punches up numbers and you ain't got to say a TOC reading and all. Every time you change, you you ain't got no choice. You got to wait. Yeah. But well, you did good. You did fast enough. You got it. <laughs> oh, thank you. This one I thought you She said, was it you that told me five days? <laughs> no, third day is the worst day. She said, third day was the worst day. The third day was the worst, but I kept waiting for that fifth day. And I was thinking, it's going to be all right. We haven't got to that fifth day yet. No. <laughs> I ain't looking for the person that told me five days I'm going to hit probably what the doctor said, but he ain't never had it done. <laughs> right. That's like a... Uh, a male uh, 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 delivers Yeah, we didn't have nearly enough. That was yesterday. 
I tell you one thing, I went home last night, and I got me a little bottle of water to sit out there, and I'm going to fan myself. So, wow, I'm just screaming, you know. I just sit out there and cool, you know, and I thought, I am so cool. I'm about to fall. You know, I didn't need to buy it. I got to use the bed around. Now, I did. I had to go to the bed. I did. 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 I did